Alright, that's going. Facebook Live. Should I go live? Yeah. Three, two, one. We're setting up. We're almost ready for you. I don't know how just, to open this. A, yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's just a swipe up. We're getting ready for you. Hello. We're trying to get four things going on. We're going to get them going on. Four things at once. What is going on with this? Wahapa. Wahapa. We're trying to get four social medias mm -hmm. at once. So here we go. Nice. Last one. If you could see the setup, you'd be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Woohoo! Oh, hey, Kelly. You're not in mine. Uh oh. Frick. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, there Just we go. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good. <laughs> Should I move over more? All right. Now you're not in mine. No, oh. we're good, we're good, we got it. Okay, okay. The lighting's pretty good. Wow. So wow, we're so happy to see everybody. This is Lisa. And I'm Mark. Howdy. We're the Meme Busters. <laughs> We play the Ghostbusters theme song, but I think it's copyrighted. So just imagine, we ain't afraid of no memes. <laughs> I have students, I have friends who complain about, you know, oh, that motivational stuff and all that positive thinking. I've tried it and it doesn't work. And I always thought, how come, how would positive thinking not work? I don't, I don't get it. But if, uh, if along with your positive thinking, you're being really, really hard on yourself, Chances are it's not going to work. So you're going to take something motivational and then hit yourself over the head with it? It's a no-brainer because yeah. you'll beat your brains out that way. Yeah, and a lot of these memes, too, are just unrealistic or idealistic. And, it, and they can actually create more neuroses than, than uh, be, be more useful. Um, so we're going to kind of dissect a few. And if any of you guys out there want to you know, put one up that you like, we'll be happy to talk about it, although I have to get really close to, to see what you're typing. Um, so, we wanted to start with, I choose happiness. Yes, don't you love that? <laughs> I choose happiness, because happiness is a choice. <laughs> you know, I went to my first therapist... He was actually a psychiatrist. I started with a Freudian psychiatrist. Boy, I, I didn't waste time with any counselors or, <laughs> or just regular psych. No, Freudian. And, uh, you know, I have been dealing with depression. I put it in scare quote, quotes because I don't know if it's truly um, a diagnosis at this point. It could have just been, I don't know, I want to talk about that. But the point is to choose happiness. If you're telling somebody who is suffering from chronic sadness whether that's depression or not to just choose happiness they're gonna just choose to shut you out is what's gonna happen it's it's not um, it's not so easy and it's also a very black and white kind of choice what did your friend say about what's on the table you just told me well you could choose happiness or sadness uh, which one would you want to choose and of course, everyone would choose happiness, but happiness, like all things, is uh, impermanent. And it's based on having life be your way. And obviously, happiness is going to be very different for every single person. What happiness is for Lisa might not be happiness for me. 
and for all of you, you know, happiness is very subjective. Uh, and be, because it's uh, based on having life go the way you want it to go, uh, when life isn't going your way, then there's no happiness. So, you know, and also with this I choose happiness kind of nonsense, it's a good way to take all the stuff you don't like about life and just sweep it under the table and just say, well, <laughs> okay, I, you know, I have this disease and this illness, but I'm choosing to be happy, but no, the, you, you can't always be happy, nor should you be happy all the time. It's unrealistic. But our society, you know, says if you're not happy, then you're not successful and you're not, you're not doing it right. There's something wrong with you. It's almost taboo to be unhappy. But the reality is we're all kind of unhappy at, at some points. Uh, and when we go home to our lives, it's not all happiness and bliss. And if it is, then, you know, I'd love to uh, <laughs> hear about how that, how that happens. But uh. It's also the black and white thinking of... You have sadness and happiness on the table. Which do you choose? Well, life is just not that black and white. You know, s situations include happiness, sadness, and everything in between. How, how could you choose one clear thing to feel about whatever? You're going to have a mixture of feelings, and that's another thing people have to get used to. You will feel a number of feelings at the same time. You're not just all happy or all sad at once. How do you feel about graduating? Well, I'm relieved. Oh, so you didn't enjoy school? No, no, no. I'm kind of sad to be missing my friends, too. Oh, so you're sad. Well, no, I'm, I'm relieved. I'm happy. I feel accomplished. You could list a, about a hundred things, really, if you thought about it, that you're feeling about accomplishing something. So to say, I choose happiness, or I'm going to go down the list and only pick the positive emotions. Ah, how about peace instead? Ooh. Rachel. Good one, that's Rachel. Good one. And, that, and that's really where we're going with this. It, happiness isn't a, a, a good goal to have. Uh, it's fine uh, when things are going well to enjoy happiness and embrace it, uh, but to chase after it and try to cling to it and have it permanently be that way is just useless, you know? So finding the ability to have peace or contentment or equanimity and being able to welcome uh, all of life. That's what our practice is about. And, and for me, especially teaching the meditation and the mindfulness, it's all about being present with what is. And sometimes what is isn't very happy, isn't very uh, exciting, isn't very pleasurable. So we have to learn to take it all in. Uh, was it Ecclesiastics? You probably know better. Ecclesiastes, yes. Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiastics. So much for my religion degree. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a time for hope and a time for sadness. And there's a time for all of them mixed together. So peace, absolutely. Just be at peace with all of your feelings. You know what? They're experiences. They're all experiences that are precious. And, you know, people uh, who say, oh, you know, anger is no good. And anger is a waste of time. No, anger is a very enlivening, motivating emotion. And important for boundaries. I mean, if a boundary's crossed, anger is there for a reason, so that you can say, hey, you know, this isn't okay. Um, and we got some com great comments. One, someone, it's one in the morning, someone from London. Hello from London. Hi, London. Uh, and we also have, uh, Anne Marie says, happiness is fleeting, peace is what we should strive for. Peace and joy. Very good, very, not, very in line with what we're talking about. We should create new memes, realistic memes. And that's what I don't like about some of these memes too, is they're just so unrealistic. Like, you know, if you're not happy and you see something like that, you're going to feel bad. Like, oh, like I'm, I'm still sad. I'm trying to choose happiness, but I'm still miserable every day. I'm still anxious. I'm still sad. I'm still in pain. I'm still grieving, whatever it is. Something's wrong with me. Why can't I do it? Uh, so that adds a whole extra set of neuroses on top of it. And I use this example all the time. There are some people out there that blame your thinking for, let's say, cancer. Uh, there was a woman at a, uh, a meditation event uh, for, for cancer, and she had lung cancer. And the person said, it's because of your negative thinking that, that you have cancer. It's like, oh, great. So now you already feel bad about having cancer and getting all these treatments and so much is going on, but now it's your fault. 
you know, and, and, and this is what people are, are telling other people, and it's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not very wise and compassionate. So, you know, having a, you know, realistic view of life and having realistic practices and realistic memes to live your life by. Uh, and then that's another important part is don't just like memes, like contemplate them and, and, and live them and see if, if, if they're practical in your life. And if they're not, then throw them out and come on our show and tell us what's wrong with them. Um, okay, I've got some questions here. What about anger, frustration with oneself? Ooh, Lisa, you want to start that one? Sure. Um, <coughs> why do you ask is my question. <laughs> so why are you angry with yourself? Be patient and loving with yourself. Uh, would you be angry with a small child for making a mistake? I'm, I'm only guessing about why you're feeling angry with yourself. Oh, I'm so mad at myself. I should have. Okay, well, that's the past. So you can't change that. So if you're feeling angry at yourself, it's because you think that you didn't live up to something. You didn't do something. Be very forgiving. Each, each situation is going to bring information. Uh, you need to talk with very non-judgmental terms to yourself. You know what? It was this situation. I noticed that that situation was part of a pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to choose something different probably in the future. And I have patience with myself right now because I'm learning. What would you say about people who get angry and frustrated with themselves? Perfectionism? What? I would just talk about the title of my book. Be your shitty self. <laughs> uh, you know, the, I come from more of the Buddhist approach, and it's really about radical acceptance of yourself. And you know what? We're all humans. We're all flawed. There is no perfection. You're not going to become an enlightened Buddha forever. You might have moments of it, you might have glimpses of it, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you're still going to have your stuff. And that's what, you know, I, I try to really uh, get across to people is, no matter how much you meditate, no matter how many spiritual teachers you visit, no matter how many therapists you go, you still have your shit, you know, right there. And it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. And uh, once you can accept that this is what's present, so it might, it might be anger with yourself or frustration with yourself or being too hard on yourself, um, but really uh, learning to accept it and then it becomes workable. Then, then it becomes uh, a workable situation. And of course, understanding that it's just thoughts and ideas and storylines that you continue to pick up and grab onto and say, this is real, this is me. I don't like myself. I have this thought. I don't like myself. And up, I pick it up and I believe it. And now this is who I am. Somebody who doesn't like themselves. But instead you can have a, a spacious uh, uh, relationship with it and learn to see your mind. I don't like myself. Up, oh, thinking. That's just the thought. That's all it is. A lot of these things that we suffer from are just fantasies in our minds. And we can come back to reality. This moment through the senses, uh, just consciousness, awareness of this moment, uh, and, and try to rest there and, and be more spontaneous. You know, don't be so predictable. That's what I would say. That's a good one. That's a, a that decent That's really name. good. <laughs> I choose happiness. So that's the one we're talking about now. Well, you don't have to choose anything. Just, just be. I hate that one, just be. Because what does that mean, just be? I mean, I'm sitting, I'm talking, am I just being? But you know, right? just, just let yourself... Feel what you're feeling, think what you're thinking, and don't attach by judging to judging these feelings and thoughts, because that's how you keep them. Oh, I shouldn't have thought that about her. I should be nicer, you know. And now you're tumbling around with these thoughts. They come and go, and they are not who you are. We are not our thoughts, and we are not our feelings. We're not even our actions. We are just possibility and potential. I know that's a tough one to wrap your minds around, but we're going to get to that. And something else about thoughts, too, is that when you actually sit down with them and meditate, you'll see that you're not in control of what pops into your head. So we identify with something that we're not even in control of. It's almost like, like you don't go outside and identify with the rain, right? The rain just happens to, you know, certain causes and conditions in the atmosphere causes it to rain. So certain causes and conditions inside your mind create a thought. And of course, it might be from past experiences, maybe some traumas or pain growing up. Um, it could just be 
beliefs that we decided to hold on to. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't have control what pops into our mind. We don't have control over the reactions in our body, the emotions that come up. But what we can do is relate to them differently. And that's where this idea of be your shitty self or radical acceptance uh, um, and the ultimate compassion for yourself is being able to see very clearly what's going on and then realizing that, hey, an emotion is a passing energy. Hey, a thought is just an event in the mind. I don't need to listen to this. It can be like a radio left on uh, or a TV left on. You know, you, you can still function and do things in the present moment with your mind chatting away about how bad you are or how, how much you hate this. And, and, and that the relationship is what's going to change, you know, like not the, the thoughts necessarily. And there's nothing wrong with changing your thoughts and, and, you know, encouraging positive thinking. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but you can get stuck there and you can make it more of a neurosis than, than a tool to, to help. Yeah, you can, you know, of course we can redirect a thought. You know, think of a pink elephant. All right, you just thought of a pink elephant. So we can deliberately choose our thoughts. But if we're going through the day beating ourselves over the head for thinking a certain thing, we are going to be in pain and tired mm. all the time. Because that's all we're doing. Oh, you shouldn't have thought that. You shouldn't have thought that. No, direct that thought some other way. No, no, no. You're not thinking right. You're not doing life right. Ugh. <laughs> Who could stand it? Nobody wins, by the way. There's no winning in life. In the end, we all go. <laughs> Nobody gets extra time because they thought positive. It just doesn't work that way. And, and yeah, and, and I think we should get on to that positive thinking movement because uh, there's so much to that. Uh, you know, people think if you think positive, you get positive. That, that's one of the memes that I really have a lot of problems with. Think positive, get positive. If you just think positive, everything's going to be nice and happy. Uh, but you can think positive every day, you're still going to age. You can still get cancer. You can still get hit by a car. You can still lose a loved one. Uh, you know, it's like you can't change the nature of things. You know, and I, was, I think I made the example, if you try to mold a piece of crap into a flower and you paint it all nice and red and green and it look, it's still going to smell like crap because it's crap. You know, you can't do anything uh, to make it any different. And I'm not saying life is crap, this is just an analogy, but life is impermanent and life is always changing and there's uh, pain and there's pleasure and that's just the way it is. It's not bad, it's not wrong or right, it's just what is. It's just how, how things are. So to align yourself with how things are is going to make you have a lot less suffering than fighting with yourself over how you are and how things are. And, and, and that's not to say you can't take actions to make changes, but you come from a place of accepting that that's where you are in this particular moment. Is anyone asking about the law of attraction? Because I do teach that, but I give you some options of belief when it comes to that. If you're expecting a parking lot, uh, if you're in the parking lot driving around and you're expecting, because you're doing law of attraction, you're expecting that parking space to open up, you're going to be looking for parking spots and you're going to find one. If you're driving around the parking lot and saying, oh, there's never any place to park, I've actually caught myself doing this. And somebody's like, oh, you just drove past a spot. I'm like, what? You just drove past a spot. Because I wasn't looking for it. So if you are living in expectation of things going your way, you'll notice those things more. It's the reticular activating system of your brain. So in that sense, because I'm not going to talk about magic tonight, in that sense, uh, the law of attraction does work. If you're looking out for those opportunities, you're going to find them. Whereas if you're not, you're going to just go right past them. So do positive thoughts lead to positive actions? I don't know. Are we talking about karma at all? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you talk about anything we want. <laughs> I just don't like the idea that uh, that your illnesses, um, that your moods are somehow your fault for not doing life right. Mm, that's good. Yeah. We don't want to cause more suffering in the teaching about how to suffer less. You know, some suffering, life is suffering, as Buddha said. Um, if you have a body and you love people and you, you love your pets and your family and your friends, yeah, there will be suffering because nothing lasts. Mm. That's just life as a human. Unnecessary suffering, that we can help you clear up.
nobody should suffer unnecessarily or beat themselves up in their brains because they're not choosing happiness right. And and, and to go on that, where those where the unnecessary suffering is and where the Buddha really focused on is right here. This is where the unnecessary suffering is. Rehashing the past. You know, how many times are you going to think of what you did wrong before you realize you can't do anything about it? You know, we've all made mistakes. Forgive yourself for crying out loud, you know? Like, why are you going to rob yourself of this moment, of the, the, the peace and, and contentment, not that necessarily the happiness, but the, the peace and contentment of this moment, focusing on something that already happened. Something that's, that you can't do anything about. It's a memory. It's a thought. Th memories are just thoughts. The past is only here. Same thing with the future. What's, what's the, the purpose of worrying uh, about something that doesn't even exist? That's not even here. It's just a thought. It's no different than a dream you had the night before. You know, we have to wake up and come out of our mind and just come into this moment where there's just this. You know, and again, just this might be sadness. Just this might be happiness. Just this might be intense pain or intense pleasure. I mean, uh, we have to learn to welcome life and we need to be adults in our spiritual practice. Um, you know, a mature spirituality says, yes, pain is part of life and there's no pill that's going to cure me. There's no spiritual practice that is going to somehow save me from anger or, uh, you know, save me from being upset or from our neuroses, you know, the only thing that's going to save us is a clear seeing of it and a deep understanding of its nature. And, uh, and that takes a lifetime of practice. And as soon as you conquer one aspect that you've been working hard on, like, okay, I really don't like myself and I worked on that for 10 years, and you finally get to a point where you feel good about yourself, then life says, hey, here's another problem. So don't think that there's a finale, you know, you don't get there, you know, it's, there's never a time where uh, it... it there's never a time when it's just done. You know, life is messy. Life is a, it's a disaster. You know, a good, beautiful disaster, to quote a 311 song. Um, but yeah, so, I think we're freezing on, on your... <laughs> uh, which one froze? Instagram or Facebook? I don't know, they all look the same to me. That's... That was really good, Kelly said, thanks. And Sarah Van Helden said, hi, Lisa. Hi! And then it froze. Oh, uh, but you could... Hold on, I'll get you okay. back on. Okay, I'll talk right, while talk he's while doing I that. Do <laughs> so if there's any Christians or people who want a Christian point of view, because, look, I've studied the world religions now for 30 years. I don't know if it's working. Oh, here we go. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so if there's any Christians watching and you want a Christian point of view, think of 